my money. And that's how I bought my wood lathe. These lathes are made in lots of different colours and brands, but they're fundamentally the same machine underneath. They're okay for light duty use, but I wouldn't use one for heavy work pieces. My lathe is missing the faceplate and the tailstock hand wheel, but it did include two sets of woodworking chisels. Google tells me that Hainan is a German brand, but I've not heard of them before. I have heard of Marples though. I'm a law abiding fellow, but this lathe is missing its instruction manual. This textbook was in use at my high school in the 1980s. I bought this copy at a second hand shop a few months ago for one dollar. Just give me a moment to get back up to speed. Safety first! This lathe bed's made in two parts and bolted together. Two of the four bolts are missing, so we'll fix that first. I don't want to permanently bolt the lathe to this bench, so instead I'll bolt it to some short planks that I can clamp to the bench when I'm using the lathe. I'll just move that so the offcut stays on the bench. Put the lathe on top of the planks, then line it up with the bench. Two clamps would probably do the job, but four will do it better. There are mounting holes at the headstock end, behind this cover. I'll put the screw back in so I don't lose it. I'm using this screwdriver as a punch to mark the hole positions. Drill pilot holes for the screws. I'm using hex headed roofing screws because I had them on hand. The drill won't reach to drive the screw on this side so I'm using a ratchet. Drill pilot holes through the rails at the other end. Unscrew that second screw at the headstock end. Move the lathe bed. Remove the broken drill bit. Move the lathe bed back. Finish drilling the pilot holes with a new drill bit. Use a bigger drill bit to enlarge the holes in the bed to fit the screws.
drive the screws at the tailstock end. Now refit that second screw at the headstock end. So, did we actually test this thing before we started all this work? Mark and cut a test piece of wood. Mark the diagonal lines across each end. Then make some shallow saw cuts along the lines on one end. These cuts will give something for the spur centre to grip. Drill a shallow hole at each end of the wood for the spikes on the spur and live centres. Use a proper centre drill bit if you have one, but a regular 4mm will work ok as well. Line up the spur centre with your saw cuts. Push up the tailstock. Tighten the tailstock locking bolt. Use the tailstock hand wheel, if fitted, to tighten the live centre against the workpiece. Tighten the tailstock lock nut. Make sure the workpiece is secure. Adjust the tool rest to approximately the centre height of the spindle and as close as possible to the workpiece. Spin the workpiece by hand to make sure it's got clearance from the tool rest. Put on your safety visor and start the machine. This was my first cut on a wood lathe in 33 years. I'm using a gouge chisel to rough the workpiece out into a cylinder. That felt so good. I was in too much of a hurry to sharpen the tools, so the finish isn't very smooth. I'm working left-handed here to try to give you a better view. I'm also trying to remember the best way to handle a skew chisel. Let's mark some lines and make some file handles from this workpiece. I'm really noticing the bluntness of the gouge chisel there. I'll switch to a parting tool now. Ooh, 
Whoops. Back to the gouge to round off the handle ends. Now I'll remove the tool rest and smooth the work with a strip of sandpaper. Loosen the tailstock lock nut and remove the workpiece. Apart from that huge slash mark, not too bad. After sawing in half, I now have two new file handles. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.